For me, it's very important what I'm doing because the icons have to be in the way to be in touch more easy with God. I don't do it just for me. I, I, I doing to help everybody to talk with God. My name is Titiana Popa. I come from Cernișoara, Romania. It's a small village far away from city with uh, simple people and very poor. They try all the time to do a lot of things by themselves. They have to uh, grow um, the vegetables. They have to take care um, the land. They have to raise the animals. They have to do a lot of things for survive, you know. But uh, you can see they survive and they are happy people because they have love of God. I think this is the most important thing for them. You can find them every Sunday in the morning in the church. And um, I think the God keep them strong and happy. And I'm happy because I have love of my family and love of God. I started painting when I was a little girl, around 12 years old, and I was in love about art. And um, I started in my village to painting the art, some cross where um, the people put on the cemetery. It's um, something special for our village there. And uh, late I go to the school and um, I was in Bucharest and I studying um, the religious art. I was lucky I married my husband who are Orthodox priest and these uh, things uh, helped me a lot because uh, even with his work for me was more easy to find, more way to find God, our God. I 
I discovered God when I was little and every day, every day I feel more close to Him and my paintings help me to know Him better. My mission is to bring God here to America. In this country, all of us, we came from somewhere and um, we have different religions. And um, I really think they have to know what means Orthodox, what means Jesus Christ, what means Icon, what means to believe in God. I want the people, when they see my icon, to find the peace and the love. Because the icon is really a window to the heaven. My father gave me the courage to, to start a painting. He believe I can be a wonderful artist. Um, I tried to do the best, to didn't uh, disappoint him. Going back to Romania because now it's more freedom of expression and uh, I want to do something for my grandpa who died in the Second World War and um, my father never met him. He was just two months old when my grandpa died in this world. And I think it's time to do these things for him. This year, if he was alive, he will have 90 years. And um, I want to celebrate this to make something special, a special icon for him to receive the blessing of our, our bishop and um, our priest for the village. And uh, for sure, a lot of people will be there to celebrate his memory. An icon is a piece of religious art that could be painted, mosaic, embroidered, carved in ivory, carved in stone or wood, that depicts Christ, the Virgin Mary, the saints, an event from the Bible or an event in the, in the life or the history of the Christian Church. It's used as part of the devotional life of an individual Christian, so an icon could be hanging in someone's home, but it's also used very extensively in the decoration of an Orthodox Church as an aid and as a guide in worship, as a teaching instrument, because they become books for the illiterate to learn the stories of the tradition but also to become a 
visual reminder, a visual presence of, of the presence of God in one's life. The icons are like the movie of the 20th century. Uh, they tell a story, even though they're saints of the past or they're patriarchs of the past. Each one of them has a message or a story within them. And to visualize them will lead us into exactly what it was that they're trying to express. Uh, viewing them and the artists themselves who paint these icons, uh, it's very important that I know from, for, for myself that when I view them, I see much, much more. When I see an icon, for example, of Moses or of Abraham or of D King David or Solomon, any of these type of uh, patriarchs of the past or St. John or St. Luke or Mary, uh, they reveal a story. Uh, and that story is to bring hope and faith and the message uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, we need them. We, we needed them in the past and we need them in the future. very very important to pray one icon is not just like a simple painting the artists have to know to pray have to know to put the incense to 
give all the best for these uh, pictures and uh, in the final we have the artist now we have to take this icon to put in the church and to let the priest to bless this icon and just in that moment the icon is really icon and everybody can pray and can fight the God inside. An artist that has a gift to paint and reveal the invisible because they have a visual image within themselves is definitely a gift from the hand of God. They see themselves as not the artist so much as God inspiring their hand to paint the image. Of course, they'll study the icon that they're going to be painting and historic images so that they can get it right and do it well and sketch it so they can have it appropriately done. But they see themselves as the instrument of God. The icons, when they're signed, they don't say it's been signed by John, but it's through the hand of John that this icon was painted. And so it's God in speaking through them to create the image. But Orthodox in the context of the Christian Church, as it relates to the Eastern Church, has a meaning in right, right belief or right worship. The word orthos in Greek means correct or true, upright. The doxa, or for orthodoxa, refers to belief, glory, worship. And so the Orthodox see themselves as the bearers of the right faith, the right belief of Christianity. The wooden clapper um, the, it's, call, it's, it's called a simandron, and it's a wooden stick that's beaten either with a hammer or with another stick uh, to call people to prayer with usually a rhythmic uh, pattern to it. So you know it's just not you know somebody stepping on a on a branch, and that call, it, and it becomes a call to prayer. Uh, one story I was told it exists because having bells was expensive and anybody could find a piece of wood and create this. In places sometimes having a bell would be outlawed, uh, owning enough metal because it could be melted down and turned into coins or weapons. What we call the Byzantine Empire has its origins in the founding and the unification of the Roman Empire under the rule of Emperor, Emperor Constantine the Great in the early 4th century, roughly 310, 312. He moves the capital of the empire from Rome to a new city called Constantinople, literally the city of Constantine, during his reign. And, and the empire, the Roman Empire, begins its history from that point. It will last until 1453 when Constantinople is finally overtaken by the Ottoman Turks. In the eastern part of the empire, we genuinely we find the creation and the existence of the Orthodox Church, whereas in the western part of the empire, under the influence of the Pope of Rome, we see a Latin church is evolving over centuries. The two churches over, over the centuries, and we can see it as early as the 7th and 8th centuries, the two churches begin going different ways on some theological issues and the way they organize their lives. The formal schism between the two churches we conveniently put at 1054 AD when legates of the Pope uh, excommunicate the Patriarch and the Emperor in Constantinople, and then they reciprocate the, by excommunicating the legates of Rome. Monasteries 
monasteries have been part of Christianity from the end of the third century uh, and it's typically a group of men or a group of women living under the guidance of an elder referred to as an abbot or an abbess uh, who want to live the gospel I would say in its purest most radical form literally following the command of Christ to sell all that you have and come follow me and so these men and women in these monastic communities have abandoned left behind the world as they would refer to it to follow Christ in this most radical form and it's been part of it's been in community uh, as the way to do this since the time of Basil the Great in the late fourth century This is the church where I was with my art teacher and I saw my first saint. I was just 10 years old and uh, I saw the Saint Gregorio de Capolito. I think it was the moment when it was my first inspiration and I start to think about more uh, to painting and uh, to do something for God. As a child, I didn't realize how important was all these things, the nature, the people, the icons, the cross, everything was unbelievable. Now I come and see with other eyes and I can see better and uh, I thankful of God because it led me to be in this wonderful place. The point of the ceremonies and the rituals is to give the believer an opportunity to praise God and to thank God for all that God has given us. We use candles and incense and icon and material goods, flowers and foodstuffs as part of this because in the Orthodox Church our worship is sensory and involves our entire physical bodies from our eyes and our ears and our mouths and our nose and our hands to touch things and so the material world is going to be part of that it can't be just purely an intellectual 
Oh, thank you, God, as I think about it. It involves our entire bodies because God saved all of our creation, and that includes our minds as well as our physical existence. The Orthodox Church makes a strong distinction between the wor worship of God, which is due only to God, and the veneration of icons and religious imagery, which is seen as a relative form of honor of, of worship. It's honoring God through the image that we venerate. And so it's relative. It's not worshiping the wood and the paint that the icon is painted on, but it's honoring that which is depicted or the person would, that is depicted beyond it. A good contemporary example of that would be the grandparent who looks at the picture of their grandchildren in a loving way and may even kiss that picture. Are they kissing the paper and the glass of the frame and the wood of the frame that it's of their grandchildren? No, they're kissing their grandchildren. And so the, the love that they feel for their grandchildren is passing through the photograph to the grandchildren. While this is a human analogy, we would believe that when we venerate the icon of Christ or the Virgin Mary, our love and our honor to Christ or Mary is passing through the icon to Christ and Mary. is designed for holiness, designed for sanctity. We're created in the image and likeness of God. The likeness has been tarnished or obscured by sin and the goal of our life is to recover that, is to recover the original intent for humanity to live as God wanted us to live, to care about our world, to share with one another, to, to love our neighbors, to love God, and each one of us will do that in the time and the place where we find ourselves. But we're designed and called to become holy individuals. of icons in the church today and as far as history goes and reveals that they say that a picture displaces or expresses a thousand words. In the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews it talks about men of faith and it outlines many many patriarchs and individuals or saints that displayed their courage and their feats of faith and then in the 11th chapter, it talks about a great cloud of witnesses. And I believe that icons are a witness to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, the same way as if you were to be in a court of law, you would have witnesses to justify your uh, position. And that's what icons basically do today in our society, uh, is that they reveal that they are witnesses uh, to the truth that Jesus Christ um, and the gospel of Jesus Christ is a truth. Gospel, 
Icons inform us, form us, and transform us. They inform us very simply by giving us a picture of a saint or an event that tell us the story of, the, of ourselves as Christians and as Orthodox Christians. They form us because it's a story that's being told to us in a particular way, with particular styles and issues being raised in the art itself. And the behavior, the way we venerate them and process through the streets of a village with them is shaping our identity as Orthodox Christians. But possibly most importantly, they're meant to transform us in that they invite me, invite the believer to become what is being depicted in the, in the icons, to become that saint whether Mary or John or Catherine, to become like that person. And so they call us into, the, into transforming our lives to living the way God wants us to live. The religious art in the East stays stable from the time of its flourishing in the 8th and 9th centuries down to the present. We can see development in it, but it's far more subtle in its development. We can see growing levels of humanism, realism of faces, um, and moments of life, uh, but it's still very, very stylized, still very stable as an art form. An image of 1453 can look remarkably like an image of 853. So that stability is clear. In the West, if you look at early medieval art, it looks remarkably Byzantine, again because of one empire existing, and travel of artists and artisans back and forth. And we can see it developing over time and the break would seem to be in the, in the early Renaissance, when you have the brilliant artists of the Renaissance saying, let's try to be more humanistic and capturing the world and the art world of classical Greece in particular. And so Michelangelo and Leonardo and Giotto begin moving Western art in new directions. Secondly, Eastern art, the religious art, is still very much in the confines of the church. This is a little church dedicated to all the Romanian saints. And uh, here above, we have uh, the icon imaginated by the, the painter who painted this little church with, the, with the, all the Romanian saints. He has a bare foot because uh, when he was young, he passed over a bird's nest and uh, he destroyed all the eggs. And therefore, uh, he uh, took the decision to walk all uh, of his life with uh, that uh, leg bare, without, uh, without shoes. Some Italians uh, 
name this uh, chapel the the little uh, sixteen chapel of Krasna. <laughs> It's easy to pray when you see the image or of the God or of the Virgin Mary. It's more easy to be connected with the God. I really want for the people when they see my icon to find their peace, what they need inside. To be easy to pray to God to feel more happiness, don't be scared, to understand how important it is to know we have a God, we have a place where we can make a prayer, we have a help in, in our God, because we have to just start to do the prayer and we will have back because the God never let us always take care. We, we just have to ask Him for help and He will give it to us. I feel like I can't touch the ground. I'm up a little bit, you know. It's unbelievable when i painting, I can hear nothing. Uh, I can think nothing else, just I keep my prey and I always talk with that saint or with the God and with the Virgin Mary. And uh, I ask to help me to make the right things. The Romanians, as well as many of the Orthodox Christians in Eastern Europe, under terrible difficulties, depending on the period, whether it's the Ottomans and the repeating wars back and forth, the communists in the case of Romania or Russia or Bulgaria, um, the sometimes active oppression of the church. And now with the struggles of the freedom from the fall of communism, of trying to get back on your feet, economically, socially, politically, all these things, Throughout all, all of these periods, what held them together as a society and as a culture was their faith. And that faith is depicted beautifully in this art, which has been so unchangeable or changing, yet remaining the same from century to century, from period to period. And whether they had millions of dollars or, or just a few dollars, that they would keep their faith alive in their art and in their ritual because at times that was all that they had. They weren't given the freedom necessarily to teach it to one another. And yet, as communism may have been cynical about trying to prevent teaching of religion, they either forgot their own history or chose to ignore the fact that by looking at the picture, by engaging the worship, the people themselves were continually being taught their faith.
In this part, I have to write the name for the people who, for all the family who are alive. And in this part, I have to write uh, the name for the three generations from my, my family. <laughs> Bishop from Ramiko Bolcha and was very happy what I want to do in Chernishwara and uh, he wants to come there to bless uh, this cycle and the fountain and uh, I think it will be a wonderful day for everybody in the valley. <laughs> The bishop um, can come every week or every month, you know, supposed to come once a time in a year. vegetables with onion and uh, dill, parcel, pepper, it's very good. And here my mom did yes, that bread, wonderful bread. Everything, uh, almost everything they made us home. Binecuvântat spre asfințite stăpâne Asta este împărăția, puterea și mărirea a Tatălui și a Fiului și a Sfântului Duh, acum și pururea și în vreși, era cu Dumnezeu, Împăratul nostru Dumnezeu. We show our veneration of icons by offering incense to them, burning incense to them, or sensing them with a censer. The priest or the deacon will do that, the bishop as well. But you'll notice that they also will be sensing the people. We call the people, the people themselves are called to be holy and are ve being venerated because they are themselves icons of God. They've been, they're created in the image and likeness of God and considered holy or at least on the path to holiness. And so they themselves are worthy of being venerated in, as similar to the icon. Because uh, we are uh, God's creation, uh, the blessing what uh, bishops and uh, priests uh, give to people and uh, the whole world uh, is just to, to keep uh, God's creation in contact with God. I'm so glad 
I start today to painting again Virgin Mary for my village. We know in uh, the iconography we have a lot, very old tradition, 2000 old, because the, everybody knows the apostle, uh, the Saint Evangelist uh, Luca was the first one who painted Virgin Mary, one icon like that, you know. That mean um, the the people have to believe in the icon because they was the like the stone for re religious, you know, John, Lucas, Marco, and Matthew. And they start to do the painting, the icon painting. And they venerate the icon. And I think we have to do the same. The icon, it's just... They made the icon just to be more easy for us to make a prey. To feel more close to God, to feel more close um, with Virgin Mary, you know. I think it's very important everybody to have an icon in his house. If they wanna do the pray, it will be more easy if they have in their face one beautiful icon with Jesus Christ or Madonna or uh, and many saints again who can help us to make a pray. Mary's a tangible human being. She's, she's like us in every way, shape, and form, where the Holy Spirit is God, unlike us in so many, in so many ways. Uh, so to be connected to Mary is, is very profound. We all know what it's like to have a mother, and we all know the influence that a mother can have over her children. And to this day, if you want, something, if you want me to do something, get my mom to ask me to do it, and I'm likely to do it. And so we pray to Mary much in the same way. Tell your son to do this, and in the belief that he will do it for us. After uh, she's finishing uh, the, the work uh, in Chernishwara, uh, she's come back uh, in Palm Springs to, 
to finish uh, with the icons here in our church. This church is the church where I go every Sunday to make my pray. And uh, I feel it's my duty to do these things because uh, I can't stay and just watch nothing happen, you know. When I know God gave me this gift, I have to share with everybody and make it easy for everybody to make the pray. And this church is a little one, but I think it's very special. It's a very warm church and um, everybody feel that when going, they feel that warm, you know. I think it's not important how big or how small is the church. The church is church. The church is house of God. And in any church we find found him. Him and all the saints. The icons uh, that uh, she's painting uh, uh, for uh, this church uh, are very important uh, because uh, like in uh, all uh, Orthodox churches, uh, the, the painter uh, is very important. It's very important because uh, uh, represent a message. You can stay in contact with God because of the painting. The icon is there as an image of someone who has lived as God wants us to live. And the icon is there as a model for imitation. I can try to be like St. John or St. Catherine in my own way and in my own life to try to em emulate their example, to become saints and holy in our own lives, whether we're doctors or teachers or plumbers, so that we live the way God intended us to live. Oh,